Well, let me California. expand on that. Go ahead, Kevin. I said move to California. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. It's real sad. I just went back to Texas not too long ago, and I have some extremely sick family members and relatives there. And it just breaks my heart where I'm just like going, oh, my God, you guys, you know, you, you, first of all, yeah, smoking is not good for you, but for certain things like nausea, uh, you've ever woken up in the middle of the night with, like, heartburn or really horrible stomach ache? It, taking a pill or putting anything like that, smoking is a really good way, um, or vaporizing is a really good way of, of taking a drug for nausea. It, it bypasses. Well, Ruth, I appreciate your call. Let me just say this. Uh, dealing with the nausea, that is the medically approved. The feds even admit that marijuana is amazing for people that have chemo, that can't hold food down. And I don't have a lot of migraines. I think they're triggered by pollen because the only times I have them was when five, six years ago, four years ago or so, I started having them a couple times a year because I would go on these long bike rides when the cedar was dropping two or three times a year, and I am allergic to the cedar pollen, and I would breathe so much of it that one time I got totally dizzy. It was a migraine. Pulled over, I was vomiting on the side of the road. You know, you can't, I mean, just it, hellish. And uh, so the, those are the type of migraines I have where you're just vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. And it's it's a level of pain I've never experienced. And uh, you know, that's a good idea. Maybe I should. But luckily, it hardly ever happens because I don't ride bikes when the cedar's out anymore. Uh, because I figured out every time I would do that in heavy cedar, it would I would just breathe so much of it, it would literally just make my brain have an autoimmune response to all that pollen in my sinus and felt like I was dying, uh, but uh, maybe that's the answer. But then they I have to... they, they have vaporizers now these, where you can actually you can actually use these things in a movie theater and no one will even know that you're using it. It's, it's absolutely amazing uh, some of the new little gadgets they have out to be able to use marijuana. Well, let me tell you, the worst pain I've ever felt is a migraine. You ever had a migraine headache, Kevin? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get them all the time. Oh, really? Not, well, not all the time, but I, yeah, I know what a migraine is. Sure. Oh my God! I'm sure. God, how could how could Alex Jones not get migraines unless you're just built out of steel or something like that? I can't. Listening to you gives me a migraine someday. I can't imagine all the stress. <laughs> oh, great! I, I can <laughs> no, see I mean that in a good way. Listening like, to Alex on... Jones gives you will guarantee give you a migraine. No, no, you're out there fighting the fight, so all of us lazy slobs can lay around. Yeah, but the first time I had a migraine, I was about 25. And my girlfriend was over, now my wife, I was 26, and I thought I was dying. And I called my dad and I said, I'm dizzy, blurred vision, I'm throwing up, this is the worst pain of my life. He said, you got a migraine, son. And uh, he was right. But uh, my, whoo, people that have migraines every day, I don't know how they deal with it. I Does the medical evidence was... show that it helps, um, that marijuana helps migraines? Because I've read that. For some people, uh, you know, um, yeah. Definitely. It, it, it's di different strains for different people, all different types of ways of doing it. I think uh, for some people, for headaches, actually ingesting it might work better than smoking it. I mean, it's just, it's just different. I mean, it's the kind of thing where you have to kind of find out, like, what works for you. But the good thing is is that you can, ex you can just safely experiment without really risking anything to kind of find out, like, you know, do you want to be high? You don't want to be high. Do you want to be sleepy? Do you want to be awake? You, you know, just all the different things that you can kind of feel your way around to, like, finding what works for you in a very safe fashion. And that's, that's like, the, the main thing that doctors and all these people that don't want to see all these, uh, uh, you know, they don't want cures. They just want the pharmaceutical companies want to just be able to just treat everybody's symptoms, you know, and they don't want to cure anything. And that's, you know, going back to the Codex Alimentarius you're talking about. We're going to take some more calls, folks. I want to encourage you to get the DVD, How Weed Won the West. It's even more hardcore, exposes government drug dealing, how they want to come after vitamins and minerals, the state's rights violation, How Weed Won the West, available at Infowars.com, or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Let's go to David in California. David, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Good. Hey, I just wanted to share a little bit uh, some of the fam my family struggles. Uh, one of my cousins, actually, from a little kid, was just this immense rage. And they went to the doctors, and the doctors gave them all sorts of drugs. He was on Ritalin, Prozac. I mean, there was probably half a dozen to a dozen of adult-strength drugs given this five- and six-year-old. And it wasn't until they got a prescription for marijuana 
that he basically said the traffic jam in his head just cleared away. I mean, and when he was on these drugs, he actually woke up in the middle of the night with a knife telling his mom that, you know, he heard these voices and they're telling him to kill her. Oh, no, yeah, Prozac and all that makes you go crazy. And the Ritalin and the other speed drugs are very similar to the methamphetamine, but the cops are, oh, methamphetamine's very bad, but let's make your kids take methamphetamine pills, which on the insert says causes delusions and psychopathic behavior. And, yeah, a lot of these kids are on Ritalin, Prozac. They stack five or six drugs. Uh, the average foster child, more than two-thirds of foster children are on psychotropics, and the average child who's on them is on seven. Go ahead. Yeah, he, he was about, like I said, from the time he was five to six, all because he was angry. And it wasn't until he got the weed, but then they started going public with it. They were on Montel Williams. They had a CBS 48 Hours thing. And all of a sudden, their dispensary got raided, and they were no longer able to get the marijuana to give to him. And they wouldn't even tell him they were giving him marijuana. They would bake it and give it to him in capsules and call it amino acids. You know, and all their Well, it's worse than that. I mean, it's worse than that. Uh, they know this is helping people, and they just don't want you to have access to it. That's another thing, though, Kevin. Some of the people you interviewed in here, legal dispensary still got raided. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, and since our first uh, screening here in Los Angeles got raided, Jeff Joseph is in our film. Uh, right after our screening, uh, spent 14 days in jail after our first screening. They put him on a $500,000 bond, and now he's facing 23 felony counts, which are just, I mean, it's all just completely... And by the way, he followed the state law. It was a big, nice store, open, but then they say it's illegal. They just, it, it, it's incredible. This is Obama. You know, he inhaled, and he's going to put you in prison.